Hi, I'm Lucky. and I'm here for Northern Abrasives and uh, Festool showing you how to use the Surfex system. Um, I am doing a remodel on my kitchen. It's, well, it used to be my old kitchen, it's now going to be my office. And uh, once I pulled out the cabinets, there's a fine line between where all the benches used to be, which used to be where the polyurethane finish used to be, and the oil finish used to be. So I've got the Surfex system here, which is what I'm going to be using it for. My uh, slight kitchen slash new office is 2.4 by 2.7 meters. Um, and I use heavy duty interior oil on the floor through the whole process. And one of these 30 mil containers lasts me doing the two coats on that size of floor. So just give you a heads up on that. Um, in a large area, you also can get a five litre tub of any of the festival oils. Uh, just remember, you can see here, this is why you need to shake. So whenever you use any of the oils, make sure you give it a really good shake. Use a heavy duty indoor oil, uh, because that's what they say, that you can use in banisters and highway areas, kitchen bench tops, things like that. So I want to do a long term test on how it'll actually work out on a floor. Don't know how many people have done this, but during this test, and during this demonstration, I'm using only Festool tools. So I'm sanding the whole floor with the Rotex 150 and the Rotex 90, and I'll be using the Rotex 90 with the corner attachment. I'll be going through the grits from 36 grit all the way up to 320 as it is. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy my process. I'll be doing a part two of this video. Um, after four months of continuous use in my office, which I use for business, and we'll see how it works after that and see how well it holds up. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, as you can see, exactly where my cabinets used to be. Um, if you see a little patch in the corner there, that's a patch that I've put in because that's where the waste used to come through the floor. What I've also done just down near the door I've put a bit of old skirting, so what this gives me, this gives me a nice straight edge underneath the door so when I'm outside of the office we won't see the difference whatsoever. Okay, so now we'll get start standing. Okay, she may notice this room from my last video where I showed the plasterboard and uh, sanding the wall and just here. So now what I've got is, because the benches were right up against here, so we've got the public nice surface and then we've got the original floor. What we've got here is we've got a really, really rough high edge with all grit and when they originally uh, polished the floor, um, all the dirt got caught underneath and blobs of it. So around all these edges here, and then we're using a 36 grit Ruben. Um, we've got to hook it up to the Rotex and that's hooked up to the power uh, back. So I'll go around all these edges uh, all the lips and then we'll head down to a, probably an 80 grit and we're going to go all the way up to a 180 grit. So, get started. With the 36 grit, I'm going to be putting the Rotex into the core sanding mode. Uh, this is a lot more torque and easily rips through. Speed set to four and a half. Off we go.
what I'm showing you here is because this floor throughout its life has been sanded, you can see this lip. So this is where the bench is, which is the original height of the floor. And what we have down here is you can see my sanding pad along this edge here. So from there to there is flat. What we've got is this dip. So this floor throughout its life is probably sanded about I don't know, three or four times. So now we've got a discrepancy of about two or three mil coming through. As you can see with the square, it uh, proves a point. So that lip is constantly being sanded to where it is. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the 36 grit and I'm blending this section here to match here. So, cause I'm going to be doing it all on one surface. Um, as you can see, section unsanded. That's level across. So you can see when you're dealing with these older houses, when they've been sanded. So this is why I've got to use this harder grit to try and get us down there to the soil the same level. So we continue along here, or at least feather it in so it's not as noticeable as that lip there. Okay, now, I've almost finished all the 36 grit everywhere on the floor. Only the last little bit coming on here. Um, what you see here is, well, I've just put this across the door here, because I'm going to have a transition from the polyurethane uh, floor to my oil floor, and I want to be able to, so you can't see the transition. So I'm just putting this edge here with my uh, the festival edge projector, and I can actually have that line underneath the door so you won't be able to set. So, and So all that's doing is just give me a nice smooth edge there. So I'll continue on uh, and then uh, I'll show you the progress once it's all done. Normal, normal pad. We put on 
uh, trying to look up. So what I'll do is I'll put on an 80 grit on this as well. Now, I'm only using the blue end because that's all I've got at the moment. But usually for this timber, I should be using the Reuben, which is what I've been using already, which is the brown coloured one. So, same thing, hook it up to the dust extraction. Great thing about vessel tools, don't need to get my other cable out. All I do is undo that, undo that. Plug out the plug cable, twist, hook up the dust extraction, and away go. Okay, I've just changed the camera angle so I can actually show you. So, this is the edge bit while I'm trying to get along. Turn it on the triangle mode. Using just the rotexes and the whole festival system, I'm getting through this floor. I've finished the rest of it. I'll give you a look. Okay, so that is using 36 grit on the rotex mode.
After that, I'm going to wait about four to six hours. I'll come back and I'll sand it with a 240 grit. Um, get it nice and smooth, 240 up to 320. Then I'll re oil again, wait another 15 minutes, and then I'll use the white dye. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, now I've shaken it all up. All I can do is grab it. I'll start coming down this way so you can see actually how far this 300 mil gets me. So what I'm going to do is squirt it out on the floor and then wipe it in. The first part of this process, we're going to have to be squirting a lot to get a lot on, but then you'll find the pad actually gets full of oil so it makes it a lot easier. Okay, 15 minutes an hour, so I'm going to put on the green fly. I'm going to still in fine sanding mode, I'm going to turn it down to about 3, speed setting on the Rotex. And now I'm just going to buff all this in. So what the green fly does, it actually works the oil into the grain. Um, so that's why I'm using the coarser one, and then the next one I'll be using will be the finer one. Alright, let's get going. Okay, now we've finished the, the green fly, what we're going to do is just going to buff up all the excess oil um, just with a microfiber cloth and we'll quickly buff all this. Now that's done, I'll see you in about four to six hours and uh, we'll give it a sand. Okay, now we're in six hours of the floor, it all was sat there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sand it with a 320 grit. Now you see this is a different uh, sandpaper, it's actually white. This is Festool's Brilliant Paper. Um, the last one we're using, which is the brown one, which is the root. So we're going to sand this down now to 320 grit and then we're going to give it another coat of oil. Now, we've done all the sanding we need to do. So we've gone down to 320 grit. At the moment it's feeling very smooth, almost like glass. And now we're going to do our second coat of oil. And so we'll still go over the top as last time. Except this time we'll wait 15 minutes and we'll use the white light which is a lot thinner grit um, and they'll work it in and we'll leave another 6 to 8 hours and overnight and then we're ready to use the floor. Okay, so I'll start oiling. Okay, the end is near. We're doing our final sand with the white fly, which is very, as I said, finer. Like a Scotch bright pad. Go over the top of this, I've got the set setting 3 4, in between there, around there. And we're going to go over the top of this and then we'll polish it off and then we'll wait another 6 hours and in the morning we can use it. Alrighty, so let's get started. Okay, now that's done, 
Now we're just wiping off the excess with our rag, microfiber cloth, and um, we're going to leave it for six hours. So get wiping. Okay, the next morning, all finished. No more sanding, no more anything. As we can see, the difference between the lime of the polyurethane and the oil. If you can see that the actual oil is bringing out the grain, it's a lot more vivid, uh, other than the polyurethane is dull. So, polyurethane may be stronger and everything else, but uh, if you had a nice timber, such as like a jar of floorboards or some curry pine, um, the, I would oil it for sure, Could just bring out the beautiful wood grain. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all my office furniture in and we'll see how it comes up for scratch resistance.